In this tutorial, we're going to develop an exercise about how can be calculated an isolated foundation. The isolated foundation, also called split foundation, is the element that will transmit and distribute the axial loads coming from columns or walls to the ground. The isolated foundations are divided into types, shallow and deep foundations. The shallow foundations are assumed when the width of the foundation is greater than the depth of the foundation, and deep foundation when it's the other way. And there are two ways to design a foundation, with flexural method or rigid method, depending on the type of foundation. The flexural foundation is which is capable to develop deflection or bending curvature, a rigid method is considered when the settlement is flat or the bending curvature is zero and is assumed to occur when the distance from the face of the pedestal or column to the edge of the foundation is less than two times the height of the footing. The steps to design a shallow foundation are divided in nine steps. The first things to do is determine the proper brewing capacity of the soil because it's a seismic design. The table 12.13 and that's one of the American Society's civil engineering standard has a reduction factor that must be multiplied by the nominal bearing capacity of the soil for the geotechnical investigations to have in consideration the effect of liquefaction during a seismic event. That, for this example, is 0.45. Now we calculate the service loads transmitted from the columns to the foundation with this equation. The next step is calculate the foundation area required with this equation, where PS is the service axle load transmitted from the columns of the building. Sigma is the bearing capacity of the soil and phi is the dilution factor. The next step is calculate the dimensions of the foundation, which for a square footing is calculated with this formula, where L is each side dimension and A is the foundation area required. Now we calculate the factor load PF and the eccentricity in x and y direction due bending moment with these equations, where PF is the factor x and load and MU is the factor bending moment applied to the transverse direction of the size analyzed of the foundation, and check the stress transmitted due to the bending moments to the foundation and calculate the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and ensure that the maximum stress transmitted is in greater than the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. The next step is calculate the height of the foundation by calculating or assuming it and make interactions until satisfied the requirement for one-way or two-way shared design of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. We are going to calculate it, which has to be done in three steps. First, calculate the ultimate theoretical bending moment and compare with the factored bending moment from analysis. If it is lower use the factor bending moment and if it is greater use the ultimate theoretical bending moment. Second, calculate the factors JU and RU to guarantee the ductility of the elements where Rho is the reinforcement ratio and FC is the strain of the concrete. And third step is calculate the height of the foundation with this equation, where D is the distance from the utmost fiber of the footing to the centroid of the reinforcement, where phi is the reduction factor and B is the size of the foundation analyzed. The total height of the foundation is the sum of the D plus R, where R is the concrete cover which is specified in Table 20.5.1.3.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard and is 3 inches for elements in contact with ground. Now, we check the foundation for one-way shear verification. The shear strength at the section shall be calculated with the equations 22.5.1.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where Vn is the nominal shear strength of the section, Pc is the shear strength of the concrete, and Vs is the shear strength of the reinforcement. The foundation won't be designed with shear reinforcement, which means Vs is equal to zero. Now, we calculate Vu with this equation, which is the factor shear force that acts 
in a section and calculate VC with this equation on table 22.5.5.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where V is the reduction factor equal to 0.75 according with table 21.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. And U is the actual force that acts in the foundation that is zero. Lambda is a factor that is calculated with the equation 22.5.5.1.3 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard and cannot be greater than 1. And verify that the factor of shear force is less than the shear strength of the concrete. Now we proceed to verify the foundation for two way shear, also called punching shear verification. The nominal shear strength shall be calculated with the equations 22.6.1.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where Vn is the nominal shear strength of the concrete for two way shear strength verification, and Vc is the shear strength of the critical section of the foundation. First, we have to calculate the critical perimeter VO defined in sections 22.6.4 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. After that, we calculate Vc with this equation. The next step is to calculate the dominant shear strength using the list of the table 22.6.5.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard and verify that the shear strength of the critical section is less than the nominal shear strength of the concrete. Now we calculate the reinforcement area required for the foundation. I compare with the minimum area of reinforcement of flexor allowed in sections 8.6.1.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. If the minimum area is greater than the reinforcement area calculated, we use the minimum area, otherwise we use the required reinforcement area calculated. The quantity and gap between bars is calculated with these formulas, where QTY is the quantity of rebar required and S is the separation or gap. Now, we verify the nominal bearing strength with the equation from table 22.8.3.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where PM is the nominal bearing strength, VU is the load transmitted from columns, phi is the reduction factor of 0.65 according with table 21.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. A1 is the load area and A2 is the area of the lower base projected from A1 with a slope of 2 to 1 as illustrated in figure R22.8.3.2 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. The next step is to calculate the dowels that will transfer the factor of force to the foundation. The equations 22.4.2.2 and 16.3.4.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard allows to calculate the reinforcement and minimum reinforcement area required respectively and to integrate with both, where phi is a reduction factor according with table 22.4.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, PO is the factor of axial load, AG is the cross section of the pedestal, AST is the area of the reinforcement and FY is the geo strength of the reinforcement. It's important to highlight that this equation can be used just when the eccentricity is less than 10% for tire reinforced and 5% for spiral reinforced, as is written on section R22.4.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard. Now, we calculate the development length of the dowels that shall be the greater of these equations of lambda and PSI symbol are obtained from tables 25.4.9.3 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard and should be less than D. The final step is to calculate the shear reinforcement required for the pedestal. First, we need to verify if shear reinforcement is required with equation of sections 10.6.2.1 of the American Concrete Institute 380 standard, where BU is the shear load phi is the reduction factor equal to 0.75 and BC is the nominal shear strength of the concrete. If shear is required, the shear area is calculated with these equations, where AV is the shear area, 
BW with the perpendicular dimensions to the shear force and S the separation between the shear reinforcement and shall be calculated with the table 10.7.6.5.2 of the American Concrete Theory standard. With this, conclude this tutorial.